And then finally we see the fusion of the online and the offline worlds as we've talked about. And this, uh, all these themes start to come together. And it doesn't matter whether it's the bicycle, whether it's the uh, materials, whether it's the do-it-yourself, the, uh, the white goods, whatever it is, it all becomes fused into one continuous retail experience. And uh, here we're seeing also confusion about uh, people who buy in the store to have delivered at home. Or they go to the store, they order online. And another part of this is where the product is delivered. If you look at the UK now, this year, 1.3 billion boxes will be delivered to people's homes. Things that could be as large as this, a product as big as one of these. 1.3 billion parcels being delivered to people's homes. But what happens when the person is not at home? That's the question. How many times do you have to take the same vacuum cleaner to the same house hoping that someone will be in? And the answer is it's getting very expensive. So it's also very inconvenient for the customer. So what's happened is there's been an explosion of new delivery places. It started in Germany and it is spreading fast across the whole of the European Union and they're called parcel shops or some other a name. There are several brands. In the UK, we have seen 3,000 parcel shops in the last 12 months. Now, remember me saying that these smaller shops are coming under pressure to close, to become part of a big chain. But now we have some hope for the smaller shop. A chemist, a small pharmacy, which is not inside Little or Carrefour, but is on the corner of your street near your home, 100 meters away from your apartment, and has become the place where you have your parcels delivered. And so every day you come home, you walk past the pharmacy, and he says, I have something for you. He says, thank you. And these... Uh, these uh, these arrangements, of course, are good for the retailer because if you go to collect your parcel from the pharmacy, you're saying, actually, while I'm there, have you any medicine for coughs? Um, and I have something else as well. And you're starting to revive the relationship with the small retailer. So, it's uh, interesting how it all fits together. It's all about speed, which is what we learned at the beginning, because three seconds is an eternity. Five seconds is like a million years, and if something can save me three hours, it's very worthwhile. But to do it, it means a huge investment in delivery infrastructure, in the new gold standard for delivery at home or anywhere else is not 24 hours, it's becoming, it will become same day, same day delivery, because the online channel is so slow. If I go to the store, I get the product immediately. If I order it online, I have to wait 5 seconds, 20 seconds. I have to wait 24 hours. It's really slow. And already we are seeing supply chains from the wholesaler to the retailer in businesses like auto spares to garages and to pharmacists uh, from the wholesaler. And we're, we will see increasing sophistication in some of these chains allowing products to be delivered within six hours to people where the product is a valuable one. Systems, processes, you might say, Patrick, this is a million miles into the future. I'm not telling you the future, I'm telling you history, these things are already here. The big question is simply, by when will they become big trends in Sofia. I don't know the answer to that, but I would say on the experience of what has happened in places like Ukraine, uh, in Russia, 
in Kazakhstan, in Vietnam. Do you know Vietnam has salary costs which are half those of China? I was in Vietnam in November, last November, and Intel has just spent one billion dollars building a new chip factory in Vietnam because China is too expensive. Who wants to make things in China anymore? In little Vietnam, with its very low income per person, there are more mobile phones than there are human beings. And they are accelerating their growth of e-commerce at incredible speed. 